Hello, brothers and sisters. Good Easter to all of you. This is Leo. You have met him, I think, already in one of my uh, services online. That is always with me. You follow me everywhere. I hope you're going to have a good Easter in peace. Today, for this occasion, I decided to talk, um, uh, to look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 7. I'm going to read uh, the passage of the Bible, and if you don't want to look in your Bible, you can just listen. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Many years ago, dear friends, I read a story in a book that I have never forgotten. A true story that witness told during the famous Nuremberg trial. I have probably talked about it already to some of you. A story that surpasses any possible inven invention of the human imagination. The story of a group of Jews who, during the Nazi, lived for some time inside the grace of a Polish cemetery. It was certainly the only place to hide and continue to struggle to live after escaping the deportation and the gas chambers. In a tomb close to the one where our witness was hiding, a young woman gives birth to a child, assisted by an undertaker and an 80 years old Jewish man. In our world, certainly thousands of women give birth in situations of great distress. I remember during the lockdown, a friend of mine gave birth on the street with the collaboration of the neighborhood. We know that thousands of children are born in environments marked by great misery, but certainly no child has never been born inside a tomb. At the first cry of this child, the old Jew begins to pray. Oh God, have you finally sent us the Messiah? Why, who else can be born in a tomb if not the Messiah? For this old Jew, the expectation of the Messiah was very lively and he saw in that child born in a tomb the birth of the Messiah. He imagined and hoped that this child would come out alive from the tomb to redeem Israel and all humanity according to the messianic hopes. But the baby of our story, three days after birth, drank the tears of his mother, who had no milk to feed him. And the great hope of the new old Jew was disappointed, and again, when he saw that the baby died in the same grave where he was born, what hope could survive there in a dead person? Life cannot be born from death. Death marks the end, never the beginning of anything. The story of this child does not therefore have a happy ending. The child eventually was found and buried like all those who die and all that remain of him is this very sad and distressing memory. Perhaps this story can help us understand the meaning of Easter and the words of the old Jew who else can be born in a tomb if not the Messiah. In fact, only the Messiah can be born from death and this is not a normal fact. This does not happen every day. This happens only with the Messiah and only happens at Easter. Who can be born in a tomb if not the Messiah? The old Jew, in his prayer, without knowing it, had said a great truth. And we, Christians, can understand the whole truth of his words. We know it. Jesus had to, to die and had to be buried in a tomb, otherwise he couldn't be the Messiah. We do not know why God chose so much suffering to save humanity. Certainly many times we have wondered why. 
we can only say that this gift of himself for others accomplished by God through Jesus on the cross is greatest act of love that God could ever perform for us and for all humanity. In fact, through Jesus, God became human. He decided to come down among us to wear our flesh, to live our existence, to suffer our suffering, to die our death, to share the experience of our burial. Jesus, the Son of God, could ascend to heaven without going through suffering, the cross, death and burial, but we know it would not be the same. The passage from Matthew that we have read assures us that Jesus is dead, that he was buried and that he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Who else can be born in a tomb if not the Messiah? Jesus died and from his tomb life was born. In this sense, it is true that only the Messiah could be born in a tomb because he rose from this tomb. This is what the evangelist Matthew tells us. In fact, at the center of his passage, there is no death, but the resurrection of Christ, of Jesus, as the Christ. The women who go to the tomb on Easter morning are silent, sad, saddened, closed in their many memories. They do not expect anything or any hope. But when they arrive at the tomb, they are taken, said the Bible text, by great fear. How can they not? feel fearful. A sudden earthquake, the vision of the angel of the Lord in a snow white robe, the large old stone, all things that happened suddenly, things they did not expect. We too would be scared to death, I presume, in that situation. The angel at the tomb did not come down from heaven to lead Jesus out, but to roll the stone and to show the empty tomb to the women. Jesus has already gone out and the angel said to the women, come and see the place where he lay. The angel wants to explain to the women the meaning of what they see, because the traces of God's action always require an explanation, a revelation that, ha that opens the eyes of the beholder. And the women look, the body of Jesus is not there. The tomb is really empty, but something is still needed, a word. An announcement and even more shocking announcement more shocking than how it is appeared more shocking than the earthquake Jesus is not there Jesus is not here his reason he came out of the tomb he's back to life this is the gospel the good news that the angel announces to the women and I announce to you today who can be born in a tomb if not the Messiah if life is born from the grave, then it means that the Messiah has come. If life is born from death, then it means that the Messiah has really risen. But it is not the miracle of the resurrection that can generate faith, but it is faith that can make us welcome the miracle of the resurrection. I want to repeat this again. It is not the miracle of the resurrection that can generate faith but it is faith that can make us welcome the miracle of the resurrection. Without faith, we can say many things about this event. We can say, for example, that it is be a beautiful story, but unlikely because it cannot be explained rationally. We could say that Jesus was an exemplary man, but dead, like all human beings, for which there is no trace of him in the world, and that for us it can do absolutely nothing. Or we could add that Christ is too far from our fatigue of living and from the history of the world, marked by many, too many tragedies. It is not difficult to hear these voices in this world of ours where there are too many terrible situations of violence, of injustice, of wars, hunger, which remind us of that Polish cemetery. And if we attribute the blame to God, his existence is denied. And we would say God would have intervened. It is possible to hear these voices around us, but how can we respond? It is not easy to answer because the resurrection cannot be explained. It can only be believed, announced, preached. We can only say that it is like this. Christ died. He was buried in a tomb. And from this tomb, life was born because it's risen. 
But what does this resurrection mean for us and for our own life? Does it mean that we have to hope for a future resurrection? Because nothing has changed in our present life. Apparently, we would say yes. In our world after the resurrection of Jesus, nothing has changed. Everything remains as it is. After 2,000 years of Christianity, we still have war. We still have hunger, disease, hatred, violence, division, sin. We still have the pain that touches us personally, like failure, illness, suffering, and death. Then beyond the personal pain, there is the pain that comes to us every day from every corner of the earth to the media. The difficulties, therefore, remain. We certainly would like so much for our human reality to change radically. We would like, for example, to win the coronavirus that kills so many people and still does. We are always faced with two realities that contradict each other. Two realities that are always in contrast and to which, as happens to me, it is difficult to give an explanation. Our reality, the one we live, the one that marks us, and the reality of God, which speaks of new life, of victory over evil and death and resurrection. We must not think that the resurrection and new life are something we have to wait for in the future, in after life, after death. Of course it is also this, but it's, it is not only this. The angel in our text says to the women of the tomb, I know that you are looking for Jesus, the crucified. He is not here. In fact, he's risen, as he said. The angel invites the women to look not at the tomb, but to believe in the resurrection of Jesus and to seek in this resurrection a message that also concerns us and our present. In spite of everything, in spite of the defeats, the disappointment, in spite of the pain, in spite of the problems of ours and those of the world. This means that if we believe, we enter the world of the resurrection. We are not yet resurrected, risen, but we are believers who can already live all the teaching of Christ. This is very important. It means bringing out from the many graves which remind us of the Polish cemetery, all those who lie there for the most diverse reasons. It means helping them to get out of their desperate situations and bring them back to life. It means leaving the message of the love of Christ in our own existence, within our family, in the context of our city, in the continuous ethical and political choices that we are called to make. Who can be born in a tomb, if not the Messiah? May the resurrection of Christ, brothers and sisters, truly make us live as new and aware people capable in everyday life of spending their lives with love and generosity. Because every act of love and generosity is an act of new life, of that new life that is given to us by God, and of which the resurrection of Jesus is the promise and source. If we live as risen people today, we will start to give testimony of Jesus and the kingdom of God to come. Amen. And now I would like to share with you an Easter prayer. Sorry. Let us pray. We have a moment of silence. Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate again today your triumph over falsehood and evil. The fact that all the attempts to discredit you and to suppress the truth of your resurrection came to nothing for it was impossible to deny the reality of your presence in the hearts of those who knew you. Forgive us that we are not always as truthful as we should be, slipping so easily into white lies or hiding behind half-truth. Remind us that your truth come now and forever, 
that your truth can set us free and so teach us to receive it with joy. Speak it in love and live by it in faith. Trusting in your love that alone will never fail. In your name we ask it. Sovereign God, we don't understand how you raised Jesus from the dead, how you breathed life into his broken body, how you rolled the stone away from the tomb, how he somehow appeared unrecognized to Mary in the garden and to disciples on the Emmaus road, how he walked through locked doors to be with the disciples, how he repeatedly appeared from the nowhere to stand among his followers. What we do understand is this, that he changed the lives of all who met him, turning their sorrow into celebration, their despair into hope, and their doubt into faith, and that he is with us now through his life-giving spirit, remaking our lives in turn, giving us joy, peace, a sense of purpose, such as we never imagined possible before. We do not understand, but we believe. We rejoice and we offer you our grateful worship in the name of that same Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with each of you today. Amen.